looking at your career and looking back at it, you lived through some amazing times in this country. And the, the thing that grabs me about you and so many men in your generation, there's no bitterness. It was a hard time made with a better person out of me where I got involved in Beyond the Field. And it started back many years ago. Willie Horton's baseball journey began with his hometown Detroit Tigers in the early 1960s. When he arrived at Tiger Spring training site in Lakeland, Horton had a first-hand experience with segregation. When I got to Lakeland, I could see a yellow cab, checker cab, I'm gonna go get my luggage, duffel bag, go get in a cab, and he said, where are you going? You can't ride. I said, I'm thinking, as a kid, they playing a rookie joke on me. I said, okay, how do I get there? He said, you got to walk. I said, well, get my duffel bag. And I walked three or four miles from downtown Lakeland. Then as I get to Tiger Town, I seen this white kid that I played little league ball in Detroit, and we went to room together. He said, no, you can't room together. I said, what the hell is going on? Mm. So I started to go eat. I had to sit over here. He sat there. I mean, I seen a fountain said black and white water fountain. I thought something was wrong with all the water. So they, even though you were playing, they were making you eat in a different area than their other exactly. ball players. And so wow. I called my papa, my dad. I said, I'm very confused. I love my grandmother. He said, what you talking about? I said, your mom is white. What, I supposed to stop loving my grandmother? He said, what? He said, what, where this come from? And I told him what happened. But I didn't understand it wow. at the time. Then the next thing I met Ernie Harwell, and I used to go over Ernie Harwell's home on Sunday in Clearwater, have dinner, and I learned from him about life. Here a white man from Mississippi taught me about the future. Said, if I ever get up with the big team, these are things I don't have to get used to. While a young Willie Horton was adjusting to segregated life in the South, he had the lessons that he learned about Jackie Robinson to lean on. Your dad, he had to be elated when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. As I remember, we were still living in Virginia. I remember my papa had a bus trip to Cincinnati to see Jackie play. Did he talk about that, the importance of that game, and what he remembered? Well, it was, he was very excited. Papa always talked about the man, what he went through, the sacrifice. That's when I, I learned through my dad talking about Jackie, what I had to do when I got into sports. And I started getting into the black history of ball players. Ironically, though, it would be a white teammate in the Tigers organization that stood up for Horton. Mickey Stanley, my teammate, God, we used to play double A ball, rookie ball, and stuff together. And I remember in Asheville, North Carolina, we had a late game. I had to walk to the Black Hotel. This night was late, and Mickey said, I'm going with you. And so Mickey went with me, and they wouldn't let him get him a room in the Black Hotel. They wouldn't let him have no. one. So that day on, I start getting involved beyond the field in the community with, with things going on in life. So, so what, what, what did Mickey do when he didn't get we stayed, we, we stayed in the lobby. He stayed all night with yeah, you? All in the lobby. Both of us, right in the lobby. Wow. I mean, one time we walked in the state and, and the usher said, you got to go in the corner. What do you mean I got to go in the corner? So you're a minor leaguer and you're going to watch the big league game exactly. and they're telling you, you got to go sit opposite places. Exactly. But the next year, in 62, I went to that same bush and asked her, what position you want me to play? <laughs> you know, 62, you come back, now you're on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm saying that's how the situation I always got myself in to kind of look at back, laugh like we laughing, and make it better. That's exactly what Horton would try to do several years later. It was 1967, and Horton, now a star outfielder on the Tigers, was firmly entrenched in the civil rights movement that was sweeping the country. That summer, riots had broken out in Detroit, just blocks from Tiger Stadium. We had a doubleheader with the Yankees. I hit a home run in the first game, I think. Then the second game, they came and said, game stopped, we got to go home for your safety. Because you see the smoke right over the right field park from on 12th Street. Only thing I remember is uh, getting my duffel bag, putting my street clothes in it, and I end up in the ride on top of the car, try to bring peace. You leave the ballpark, 
and go down to 12th Street. 12th Street, your neighborhood, basically. Yeah. And did you hop on top of the I car? I on top of the car trying to bring peace. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Civil rights movement, it's a big part of your playing career and part of your life. Did you get a chance to meet Dr. King at all? Well, I met Dr. King twice. What was that like? To hear him talk gave me a lot of inner strength. When he talked, he talked about life. When Dr. King talked to you, he leave you with something. And then I was very scared in 68 when he got killed. I think it brought us as a team much closer. Yeah. It brought us closer where I think some of my teammates got more involved and make it better for the future, too. How, how difficult was it to go back on the field after Dr. King was assassinated? It was tough. It was confusion. Was there a thought of maybe not taking the field at all? Well, yeah, we, a couple of it came up, but, but then we said we'd dishonor him if we didn't. So what was the purpose? But taking the field, it showed he had a purpose for us to grow. You know, I had a dream. <laughs> yeah. That had to be a little more personal for you because you, well, yeah. you'd met him, so you really had a real well, connection. Well, you get there, you start thinking about, first thing you get to, oh, man, then you start thinking bad things, then you say, what? I've destroyed what he wanted. on the field, Ford's 1968 Tigers won 103 games and an improbable seven-game World Series over the favored St. Louis Cardinals. Detroit, the new world champion. And there is a scene that has been repeated many times in World Series history. It's a happy bunch of Tigers. They have beaten the Cardinals 4-1, to and they have replaced them as the champions of baseball. From 67 to 68, seeing this town come together as a whole. I've seen white people, black people together. What we did in 68, we was part of healing this city. A year after helping bring the city together, Horton found himself in the news in Detroit for an entirely different reason. It was 1969, and Horton was keenly aware of the lack of black ball players on the Tigers' Major League roster. In 1969, Willie, you staged a personal protest and took four days off. Exactly. I said, this is the time we got to have a change. We had Ike Brown, Les Kane, and these kids in the minor league. They should be in the big league. So you wanted more black players exactly. in the big leagues? Because the Tigers have black players in the minors. And you knew they were ready. Mm -hmm. And you took a stand with exactly. the power of your platform. So what happened in those four days when you didn't play? Meeting with the owner, I got understanding about what's going on in life. It ain't going to happen overnight. It takes time. I said, I respect that. I just want you to be awareness with this. We do have black players in the minor league should be here. And then that was the end of the meeting. And then I can't, went back to the ball team. And then they brought up Ike Brown first. Next, right? next year, can't think Ike Brown came up. So, for somebody who is heavily involved with the civil rights movement and a champion for change, how do you think we're doing today? We need to get more information about the facts, about the past. Me and my wife sat back and talked. We got 21 grandkids. They seen what I went through. They got the story from the foundation. I'm concerned of the great, great, and the great Karen Kia because I think we we taking things for granted that things just happen. I educate my children through all the pain here up to Jackie, so they will appreciate it and try to improve it. You know, it's been a lot of pain been paid to get us where we at today and got a long ways to go.